Hey y'all, welcome back to another video. By the time I'm posting this, I'll be around one month away from starting our major clinical year in med school. Before then, I wanted to bring you guys along with me through a few key memories that have made this year so much fun. We'll start off with exploring Portland for a national conference that a group of my friends and I went to. And I'll also dive into some of the more clinically relevant classes and workshops that we've had throughout medical school. And also in this vlog is loads of fun, including Admitted Students Weekend. So without further ado, let's head off to Portland. I'm super pumped about this conference because this is actually going to be my first time traveling to the West Coast. And we're going to Oregon and the conference is three days long. And what's great about this trip is not only that we get to meet med students from other schools across the country and learn from so many people, but our travel fees and our conference fees are actually covered by the school. So we're super grateful for that. I'm going to be telling you a little bit more about the conference, but as for visuals, please enjoy this little montage of our travel adventures. This conference is for the Asian Pacific American Medical Student Association, and we had students ranging from first-year med students to fourth-year med students here with us. The conference actually took place during an exam week, and so because of this, we had to strategically plan out our studying. We had a total of five exams, hematology, neurology, psychiatry, a standardized patient exam, as well as evidence-based medicine. I didn't want to have too much on my mind after the conference, so I decided to take neurology at around 1 or 2 a.m. the day before the conference. Now, I don't know how smart of an idea that was because I was a little bit tired throughout the entire day of the conference, but it was really nice not having to worry about that on the plane ride home. Okay, we've made it into the building where the conference is going to be held. There's a lot of people here already checking in. Let's take a look around. We all entered through this big lobby and met our friends, chatted, had a little bit of breakfast, and then checked in and grabbed our swag. And then we bumped into a couple of our favorite M4s. Are you guys excited for your first conference as M4s? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is this, this is, is this on Instagram this Live? Oh. oh no, is this gonna be on YouTube? Oh, oh. Hi, hi, YouTube. hi YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't already, you guys should totally listen to my friend Huey here and like, comment, and subscribe. Anyway, we started off the day with a few keynote speeches, and then we had some clinical and surgical skills workshops. Here, we're learning how to do some simple sutures, and then afterwards, there was this cardiology, echocardiogram, ultrasound workshop, and we had a lot of fun learning how to read the heart. So now, uh -huh. we're gonna find the heart. Um, what are we found it. So right now, what we're seeing are the four this was a super cool experience and for those of you wondering the mannequin had this sort of automatic sensor so that whenever you put the probe on the chest and maneuver it it shows you the different perspectives of the heart on the screen after that we had a delicious lunch of banh mi and so many desserts and during this time we actually filmed a welcome video for the class of 2027 which i will link down below if you guys are interested in checking it out. We also did have some time to visit the tram and I have to thank my friend Allie for this because she basically led the way and showed us where to get tickets and everything. The views were absolutely beautiful and people actually do take this tram to work daily because the end of this track is the Oregon Health and Science University Hospital. And we did spend a couple of minutes up there. We actually went in to use the bathroom and then we came down because it was a substantial ride back and forth. After a few more sessions and our concluding speeches, there was an award ceremony and our school actually won the Baby Carrot Award for having the most number of first-year med students at the conference. The next day, before going to the airport to catch our flight back to New York, a group of us decided to go to the Arboretum and we took a hike there. It was magically snowing and it was such a beautiful sight and there's something about just being with nature and not really having anything immediate to do I guess in this case, other than catching our flight, that just makes it so enjoyable, so relaxing and very refreshing. And this is us in the airport. Our friend Laura was actually playing the piano here and she gathered up a nice audience. Several weeks later, after our spring break, 
I'm here in the simulation center waiting room and this is where we wait before interviewing our standardized patients during our OSCEs. This one is for cardiology and in addition to practicing with standardized patients, we also get to practice with our good friend Harvey. Harvey, Harvey is a mannequin. He's a bit silent, but that's okay. That makes it all the easier for listening to his heart sounds. <laughs> The different settings on Harvey represent different arrhythmias and different murmurs. We also can practice taking vitals on him, so we measure his pulse and he has a blood pressure cuff on here. So next up, I wanted to give you guys a little peek into our cardiopathology lab. Please feel free to skip forward if you don't like seeing organs. Generally, for each organ system block, we have at least one to two days of pathology. And here we have our pathology lab where we're able to see and feel hearts in person. And we're always so, so grateful to the donors of these organs and their families because their generosity and their selflessness has helped us to learn so much. During the cardio block, we also had a TAVR workshop, and TAVR stands for Transcatheter Aortic Valve Replacement, and it's a minimally invasive procedure that's used to replace the aortic valve in patients with severe aortic stenosis, or narrowing of the aortic valve. What I'm holding right now is an example of a valve that would be placed, and our professor here is showing us the technique to do so. So next up is the cataract surgery, and this was a long-awaited part of this vlog. I went to this cataract surgery workshop held by the ophthalmology interest group, and I learned that residents actually practice surgery on pig eyes. They had a bunch of these pig eyes, and they put them on this foam mannequin head, and it was really as if you were doing it on a real patient. Our resident here allowed us to practice inserting the slit knife under the microscope, and it was like every small movement felt like a giant earthquake, and it was just really impressive how much practice and how much training and how much diligence is needed to really perfect these skills. Next up, to continue on this procedural trend, we had a suturing injections and biopsy workshop held by the dermatology interest group. Our awesome dermatology attendings and residents came to teach us after their clinic day. And this is Dr. Candela. He's teaching us how to load a syringe and then also how to properly inject into the skin. Here I am injecting some fluid into this fake skin over here. And afterwards, we also practice some punch biopsies. I'm talking my friend Laura through kind of her first punch biopsy. And afterwards, I was able to practice a shave biopsy of a fake lesion of the skin that I drew on with marker. So we're going to start around um, one millimeter proximal. Rock it back and forth and stabilize it. The last bit, oh, a little bit too much. Ah, oh, ta da! Then we're gonna put it in the formalin jar and then we're gonna send it off to pathology. And this is gonna heal yeah, so over very nicely. Thank you. Like, right and then dab it with some aluminum and chloride. You have, uh, and you put some ointment like in the bandage. And there you have the shape of the day after our suturing and biopsy event, it was actually the start of admitted students weekend. So the newly admitted class of 2027 came for revisit. I volunteered as a revisit leader and so I was able to speak to a bunch of them, give them tours of the campus and also visit the United Palace where they got an introduction to the Washington Heights community and also got to meet their potential future classmates. Hi Will! And of course, it isn't a Columbia Med School vlog without an amazing coffee house. So we also had that that same night. Hey guys! Right now I'm in Central Park. I got off the A train at 59th and then I walked up to Sheep Meadow. We're here because basically our entire class is gonna come to Sheep Meadow just to hang out, play some spike ball, play some frisbee. And it's such a beautiful day. Yesterday was like a very surprisingly hot day. It was like 85 degrees and it's only April. 
and today it's like around the same. This was one of the first really nice spring weekends of the semester, so we all took advantage of that. I also wanted to show you guys what commencement looks like. So a few weeks later, the class of 2023 had their graduation, and this is in the armory where we also had our white coat ceremony earlier last year. This is going to be us in just a matter of a few years, which is really, really fast if you think about it. But before then, we still have quite a bit to go and to keep us on track and to make sure that we're reflecting as we go, we had this time capsule event where Paige, who is a co-lead of the crafting club, helped bring supplies for us to make little jars of notes that we're writing to ourselves throughout these years of medical school. I think it's such a creative way to keep in touch with your earlier hopes and dreams and then seeing how they match up with your later hopes and dreams as a graduating medical student. And of course, what is a vlog without some birthday footage? In the spring, it was so many people's birthdays. And so here is a montage of many different celebrations all in one. And last but not least, I wanted to touch on this narrative medicine block that we had in our doctoring course. Some of our classmates like Isaac and Gabby and Allie, who are amazing artists, took this comic book writing class. This was their final product of their comics that they created. Did some they... people did digital, some people did like actual oh. This is sad. <laughs> I believe the comic book section was taught by Dr. Schwartz, Dr. Benjamin Schwartz, who is both a doctor and a cartoonist for The New Yorker, and he is currently the chief creative officer for the Department of Surgery here. Personally, I took the journalism section, and for this class, we basically wrote an op-ed of any topic of our choosing, and we also were able to take a field trip to the Condé Nast headquarters at the end of the semester. We met with some of the editors there and shared our ideas for op-eds. And I just thought that was the coolest thing ever because it is so different from our current day-to-day -day in the classroom and in the hospital. And it just felt like I was in a movie. I know that I'm posting this around the time of Thanksgiving and I just wanted to say how grateful I am for all of these amazing experiences. And I wanted to thank you for being someone that I can share all this with. This is going to be the end of the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it and please let me know if there's anything else that you'd like to see on the channel. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving break and I will see you all in the next video. Mwah.